So in this lecture, we're going to talk about dynamic versus static loading. In typical civil engineering, we mostly consider static loads. The conditions for a static load would be that the force magnitude isn't varying with time. But let's say the force does need to change or when the force is applied to a structure. So it goes from having zero force to some magnitude of force. The applied load or the rate of application of load must be slow. So you have to apply any loads to the structure slowly. Now, we'll qualify a little bit more shortly what we mean by slowly uh, in, in the following lectures. But for the time being, let's just hold those two conditions in our mind for a static load. The magnitude of the force cannot vary. And when we're applying the load to the structure, i.e. when we're going from zero load to the final value of load, that rate of application must be slow. So let's get a quick note down on that to start off with. So another thing we can say is that if we have a static force, we're going to get a static response. So one value of force magnitude corresponds to one state of deflection. So let's start off now by thinking about Hooke's law. So we're used to seeing Hooke's law presented or introduced in the context of a spring. So we'll stick with that for now. So we imagine this spring, it's got a spring constant or a stiffness of K, and then we imagine applying a load P or a force to the end of this spring, and what happens, the spring extends, and it extends by an amount which we're going to call delta. Okay, so Hooke's law is basically telling us that the deflection delta is equal to the force divided by the stiffness of the spring. So, oh, so far, so good, right? So static case, we have a force P, divide that by the stiffness of the structure, in this case, just the spring, and we get the elongation or the deflection delta. The key point here is that we have a static deflection being governed by the magnitude of the load and the stiffness of the structure. That's the point I'm trying to get to here. This here, is a static deflection. And the only things that it depends on are whatever magnitude that load is P and whatever the stiffness of the structure is K. So let's get a quick note down on that. So now let's move on from Hooke's law and think about what does that mean in the context of a beam. So let's consider a very simple cantilever beam. Okay, so for our beam here, our cantilever beam, we have a load P coming on the end and that's producing a deflection delta. Now you'll notice that I've made P and delta both functions of T. So now let's think about that load P a function of T. What does that graph of load versus time look like? So the load must initially start at some value, let's say zero, and it rises up to a value of, we'll call it P1. And then it stays at that constant value of P1. And let's say it hits that at T1. Now the key thing here, key thing, is that the rise time, the time it took to go from zero up to a value of P1 was some long period of time, okay? So the load was applied slowly. Again, we'll, we'll dig into what that means slowly uh, shortly. So now let's look at the corresponding deflection. Okay, so we can see the corresponding deflection, it mirrors the load, because remember, the deflection is simply a scalar multiple of the load. So we would say that delta 1 is equal to P1 over K. So the load was applied slowly, and the deflection increases as a linear function, a scalar multiple of the applied force. That's all we're saying here. So this really is just a classic representation of static structural behavior. You apply a load P, you get a deflection delta. If you apply a load 2P, if it's a linear structure, it behaves linearly, you get a deflection 2 delta. So now we're going to consider the first breakdown in this sort of classic static behavior. We're going to consider the breakdown of our first condition. And that first condition was that the force magnitude remains constant. So if the force magnitude varies as a function of time or it varies with time, well then 
the structural response or the structural deflection is also going to vary with time. So it's pretty straightforward. Remember, we're maintaining our second condition. So we're not saying that the rate of change of force magnitude is large. We're still saying that any change in the force magnitude, the rate of that change is still, is still low. And so there is no rapid change in force magnitude. All we're saying now is that the magnitude of the force is allowed to vary slowly. And what would that mean? Well, it's a very straightforward extension of what we've just looked at here. So let's just get a quick note down on it to start off. So the first thing I'll say is if the rate of change of force magnitude is small, we don't have a problem. We would simply, in that case, just have a succession of static analyses. So we could say that any deflection delta 1 is equal to whatever the magnitude of the force was that corresponded at the same time divided by the stiffness. So all we really have is a simple succession of static analyses. If the force magnitude is changing, but the key thing is the rate of that change is small, all we have is a succession of static analyses. And we don't actually have a dynamic problem in the classic sense. We technically have a dynamic problem because the force magnitude is changing and therefore the deflection of the structure is changing, so it's moving, but we don't have any more complex an analysis. It's simply a succession of static analyses that we'd have to consider. And so we can think about what that means graphically. If we now have a force that rises from a value of zero up to some value P1, let's just say for argument's sake, it stays at that value for a period of time. And then let's start thinking about what happens if it changes. Let's say the force magnitude drops. So we get a gradual drop, perhaps a rise, some kind of change in the force magnitude. Note that I'm drawing nice shallow curves here. So I'm not drawing any big rates of change in the force magnitude. Well, what would the corresponding deflection look like? The deflection time history is just a scalar multiple of the force time history because remember because the rate of change of force magnitude is small the deflection will simply be a scalar multiple of the applied load so for any time we would get the value of the force at that time let's call it p2 and the deflection the corresponding deflection would simply be let's call it here delta 2 and we would say that at any time any instant in time in this case, let's call this happening, let's say this is happening at T2, we would say that delta 2 was simply P2 over K. Okay, so it's simply a static analysis a little bit further down the time axis. So really, it's not very interesting, right? Because all you're looking at is a succession of these static analyses. So although I say this is technically a dynamic problem, because technically, the magnitude of the force is changing, and therefore the magnitude of the of the deflection is changing, we don't have to branch out into any more complex analysis because, as I said, that rate of change of the force magnitude is quite small. The much more interesting case, which is what we're going to dig into in the next lecture, is actually what happens when that second condition breaks down. So what happens when the force magnitude or the rate of change of force magnitude is no longer small or we have rapid or fast changes in force magnitude, then we start to see much, much more interesting behavior because we start to think about this idea or this concept of inertia. And that's one of the things that we're going to be dealing with in the next lecture. So we'll pick it up then.